Hello, I'm Tuan from CSN Schools, and in this session, I will be walking you through a sample solution for Written Examination 2, Question 7 for VCE Mathematical Methods Units 3 and 4. This one is also focused on pseudocode. So Question 7 is saying that one way of implementing Newton's method using pseudocode with a tolerance level of 0.001 is shown below. The pseudocode is incomplete with two missing lines indicated by an empty box. They've given us some code there. And which one of the following options would be most appropriate to fill the empty box? So this question is a little bit different from the other pseudocode questions that we've gone through previously in that this one does require us to understand how Newton's method works and how to actually represent that in pseudocode. The other questions previously, we were given the pseudocode and we were asked to find the final value. So you didn't really need to understand what the pseudocode is doing. You just need to be able to follow it through line by line. But in this case, we do need to understand how the pseudocode will implement Newton's method. So the way I'm going to walk through this solution is I'm just going to give you the answer. So that's what the answer should be. And then I will walk through the algorithm and explain why that is the answer and also give you a bit of a recap as to how Newton's method works in pseudocode. As usual, if you haven't already, please watch the first three videos in this series because it does go through some pseudocode concepts that we are assuming you already know and check out our successful pseudocoding course at csnschools.io forward slash pseudo, P-S-E-U-D-O uh, for more information and exercises. So we're going to step through the solution with some example arguments being passed into the function parameters. So here is at the bottom there, uh, the function Newton being called with some example arguments that I have created that we can use to step through the algorithm with. As usual, the arguments will be passed into the parameters. So they will get copied into the parameters and we're going to step through the function with those values. The value for f of x I'm going to use is going to be a cubic. Uh, that's y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 3. And that's just a visualization of what that cubic looks like. And remember that Newton's method is to find or to estimate the x-intercept of a function. So if we plot that function out and we take a look at it, we can visually estimate that it's between two and three, it's sitting there. So what we're going to do is in the second argument to the uh, function call, I'm going to start that off with the value of two. So as usual, the parameters get set up as variables in the trace table, the values get populated there on the right hand side, and then we are ready to commence our step through of the algorithm. So the first line is asking us to find out the derivative of f of x. So what we're doing here is we're going to manually find the derivative and assign it to that variable df of x. So there it is, it's 3x squared minus 6x plus 3 using the standard rules for differentiating a polynomial. The next line of code is assigning zero to i. Now you may have noticed a pattern with the other questions before i is typically used as a variable to keep track of the number of iterations that we go through a loop. It's generally a clue as to what i is going to do. Doesn't always have to be the case, but in these set of questions, they are following that rule. So zero is being assigned to i, and then x naught, which is the initial estimate that we are starting with, which was two in this case, that's going to be assigned into the variable previous x. So there's two being put into previous x. So now we're going to enter our while loop. So as before, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the condition that follows the while loop. So we take the value of i, which is zero, substitute into there, and then we check whether that condition is true or false. So zero less than 1000, yes it is. So we are going to enter the while loop. And that's where we get to this line of code, which is getting us to calculate the next value of x. So we start off with x, the x-intercept, our guess of the x-intercept being two. 
this line here is going to refine our guess using that formula there. Now, this formula is the heart of Newton's method. So I'm going to spend a bit of time just explaining visually what that means. So our function there is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 3. And our initial estimate is going to be 2. So that's where previous x is. So what happens here in Newton's method is we are going to evaluate the function at that x value. So that yellow dot is indicating what the evaluation of that x parameter is. So that's where it sits on the curve. And that's at previous x and previous y. What's going to happen next is Newton's method will calculate the derivative of the function at that x value. So by calculating the derivative, that is forming a tangential line that touches the function at that point. We're going to use that tangent line, extrapolate it, and find out where it intercepts the x axis. So that's at that red dot there. And that is going to be the next estimate for the x-intercept that we're going to use. So let's just go through the maths here so that that equation makes a little bit more sense. We're just going to focus on that red straight line. So we're gonna look at how we can represent that using a straight line equation. So using y equals mx plus c, our traditional straight line equation, the m, which is the gradient for that equation, is essentially the derivative of the function at previous x. Okay, so we've just replaced m with df of previous x. The y-intercept is going to be zero. So that equation basically becomes y equals df of previous x, x. So that's one form of that red straight line equation. So the other equation can be obtained using the rise over run approach using the next and the previous points. So y equals mx plus c, m can be broken down as next y minus previous y, all on next x minus previous x. Now next y is going to be zero because that's the x intercept, so the y is going to be zero. Previous y is the function evaluated at previous x. So that's where we have previous y equals negative f of previous x. And the run is just next x minus previous x. Um, and then we have the x afterwards. And once again, the cut or the y-intercept is at zero. So we can simplify that down into y equals negative f of previous x all on next x minus previous x, x. So these two equations are the same. They're describing the same red line. And so we can equate the two gradients together. So we can put them, pull them out and set them aside at the bottom there. And if we rearrange that equation so that we express everything in terms of next of x, because that's what we're trying to find, isn't it? We're trying to find what the next estimate of x is going to be. So we're going to rearrange all of the unknowns so that we can find what next x is. We get next x is equal to previous x minus f of previous x divided by the derivative of f at previous x. And if we extract that formula out, we can see that is exactly what is represented there in the pseudocode. So that's an explanation of that line of pseudocode. In a sense, that's the most important line in this pseudocode, but luckily for us, that was not the line that we had to know in the question that was being asked of us. But anyway, so that's how we evaluate next of x. You can see that is now popped into our trace table on the right there. We are going to evaluate that by plugging in two for previous x. Okay, we're going to substitute in the function and the derivative of the function, and we end up with next of x being 2.333. So what happens now is we're approaching the two lines of code that we needed to fill in to complete the algorithm. So let's take a look at that first line, and I'm just going to focus on the middle uh, expression there between the two less than signs. So we're looking at the expression next x minus previous x. So if we evaluate that, it's 2.333 minus 2. And what that's doing is it's telling us the gap between 
the next value, the next estimate that we calculated, and the previous value. What's that gap? And we find that gap by taking away the previous value from the next value. Okay, so that's what that point is. What's the gap? What's the movement? Notice that this can be negative. It doesn't always have to be positive because next of x can also be on the left hand side of previous x, which we'll see in a later iteration. Okay, but just note that that can be negative as well and it's okay. So we're just going to take that answer, substitute it into that middle expression there. And then the last part of that line is focusing on the tolerance level. So it's saying that we are given a tolerance level of 0.01. The tolerance indicates that the result is acceptable if the difference between the next and previous values, that is the gap, if that falls between plus minus the tolerance level. Okay, so the red area there is the gap. And if that gap is between plus and minus the tolerance level, then we are good and it's acceptable and we can return that as an answer to this pseudocode. So if we, if we evaluate that, we find that it is false, which means the gap is too large at this stage. Okay, the, the guess between our next guess is too far away from our previous guess for us to be satisfied that it's coming together. Okay, so it's not good enough. So we're not returning yet. Instead, we go to the else statement and we are ready to move on to our next iteration. Okay, so we're getting ready for our next iteration here. So before we go to the next iteration, we are going to take our new estimate, next x, and we're going to put that into our previous x. So what that's doing, the new value of x is going to become the previous value of x when we go around the next time. Okay, so we'll, we'll show a diagram of that in a second. So this line here is taking the next value of x and putting it into the previous value of x. And you can see what's going on here as the green dot is our next estimate and that's going to be changed into the previous x for our next estimate. So there it is, previous x is going to change from two, which was our first guess, that will now become uh, 2.333, a refined guess, and i is going to go up by one, and then we reach the end while statement. So once again, end while doesn't mean we finish, it means we need to go back up and reevaluate the while condition. So i is less than 1000, is it? Well, i is now gone from zero to one. One is still less than 1000, so that's true. That means we go back into our while loop. And now we're going to estimate our next value of x using the previous value of x, which was the estimate from last time. So let's take a look here. Our previous value of, of x, that's the value of the function evaluated at that point we're going to find the derivative of the function at that point, draw the straight line, find out where it intercepts the x-axis, and that will be our next estimate, which is next x. There's that equation again. So if we go through and calculate that, we get next x is equal to 2.264. Okay, so we come down to these two lines of code once again. We're going to calculate the gap between next x and previous x. Okay, so we're going to take previous x away from next x and we get negative 0.099. So notice this time the gap is negative. If we go back and take a quick look at the graph, we can see that the green dot is to the left of the yellow dot, which means that the next estimate is less than the previous estimate. So that's where we can get a negative gap. Okay, so we take that negative value, we plug it into uh, that expression there, and then we're going to evaluate to see whether that gap is between our tolerance level. It is not. So it's still not good enough. We're going to get ready for our next iteration here. And once again, we're going to update our previous x value with the latest estimate that we had. So there it is, change into 2.264. We're going to update our i variable. So now we're in our third iteration. i is now going up to 2. We reach end while, which means we go back up and reevaluate our condition, which is still true because two is still less than 1000. So then we go and we update our estimate once again. So let's go the third time. So here's our previous x, 2.264. Let's evaluate our function at that point. 
and then draw the straight line graph and find out where it intersects our x axis. We find it's 2.260. So there it is, x is 2.260. Let's reevaluate our gap. The gap is still not within our tolerance level, it's negative 0.004. And that's false in terms of falling within our tolerance level. So it's still not good enough. We go into our else statement. We get ready for one more iteration. Next x goes into previous x. i equals i plus 1. So that goes to 3. Let's go back up. 3 is still less than 1,000. We've actually got 997 times to go if uh, we continue down this route. So we've got a long way to go in terms of the number of iterations. Let's go through and evaluate next of x once again. So there's 2.260. Let's evaluate the function at that point and draw a straight line and find out where it intersects the x-axis. We find that that's 2.2599. 2.2599, there it is in next of x. Let's calculate the gap. The gap is now 0 0.0001, which does fall between our tolerance level. So that's true. So that means that our gap is small enough now to be acceptable in terms of the algorithm giving an answer back to whoever called it. So what happens now is that we need to give an answer back. So what value is it that we want to give back? Well, we've got really got two choices. We either will give back previous x or next x. We're going to give next x back because that is the more refined estimate that we calculated. So previous x was the previous estimate, x, next x is the next one, so we're going to give obviously the more accurate one, so that's why that line is going to be next x. So we're going to take the value, substitute it in, and then return that back out. So that's why those two lines of code are the way they are. So once again, if you'd like some more information about our coding courses, please check out our site at csnschools.com for more information about our company and check out our site at csnschools.com for more information about our charity and csnschools.io for more information about our courses. Thank you.